Hello, Simon. I'm answering to you because you posted a Twitter uh, posing a question. The question is, uh, how should Israel respond to the attack by Hamas? Well, it's logical that Israel, or it's understandable, I'm not sure if it's logical, it's understandable that Israel will retaliate with huge force, you know, twice as much force as Hamas used against the Israelis, or three times, or even ten times. It doesn't really matter, because the important issue is not the retaliation. The important issue is the future of Israel and the future of Palestine, or the Palestinians. Now, if Israel is interested in its long-term health and survival, I think that the retaliation is not going to make a big difference. Unless the Israelis are prepared to exterminate all Palestinian men, women and children, the Palestinians will be there and the Palestinians will always counterattack in one way or another. But even more so, long term, Israel has to think about its future because the current strategy ensures that Israel prevails for now because it is much stronger. But I think Israel should use its strength to think smarter long term. What, what do I mean by that? Well, Israel right now relies on its military superiority, but it's obviously, it's obviously it is reasonable to think that sooner or later, some Arabs, some Muslims, somebody will develop weapons of mass destruction. The Pakistanis, which are Muslims, although they are not Arabs, they already have nuclear weapons. Those weapons could end up in somebody else's hand, or even Pakistan could be taken over by Islamic fundamentalists, or other Arab states or Muslim states like Iran could develop weapons of mass destruction, nuclear or otherwise. That is only realistic to think, because it's what, 200 million Arabs or 500 million Muslims, I don't know, many people, and they are very hostile to Israel, very hostile. In part because the Muslims, they consider that they rule the lands where they live. And that's a different issue. So that's one area that makes Israel vulnerable, the possible development of weapons of mass destructions by the Arabs or the Muslims. The other part of Israel's uh, dilemma is that Israel now exists basically because it can count on the 110% support by the United States. It's, obviously, it's obvious that if the United States cut off complete relations with Israel, probably the Europeans will follow, and Israel will be all alone in a sea of hostility. And soon we'll start with uh, trade blockades and who knows what. Now, why do I say this? Because while the United States now is super supportive of Israel, and I think basically largely correct, politics in the United States could change. Yes, the Israelis, the Jewish community in the United States has now a lot of influence, well earned because of smarts and diligence and hard work. They have money to, to finance their lobbying. And that is fine. But the Jews in the United States are a very small minority. Political wins, you never know when they change. And the history of the Jews shows that sooner or later, practically all lands where they live will turn hostile to them. Sure, we can say it's irrational anti-Semitism, it's devilish stuff, it shouldn't happen, it's Nazism, whatever you want. But history shows that the Israelis, the Jews, always end up in big trouble. Generally, I don't think it's their fault, but that's the reality. The Jews lost their state or their temple about 500 or 600 years BC. Then they recovered it and they, they, they lost the temple and the, and the country to the Romans. And for 2200 years, they have been without a country. So 
if the Israelis want to exist long term, they have to think of a strategy that satisfies the Palestinians. It's not going to be a perfect satisfaction for the Palestinians or the Israelis. But what is not prudent to go on is the current strategy of the Hamas in particular, but the Palestinians in general hate the Israelis. Many Muslims, perhaps most Muslims, hate the Israelis. And the hostility will continue. The other day was an attack by Hamas that killed, I don't know, 300, 500 Israelis, most of them innocent. It's a terrible attack. It shouldn't happen, but it did happen. And regardless of whether Israel retaliates now 10 times as stronger or doesn't retaliate, the hostilities will continue unless, unless the Israelis, which are the powerful side, change their mindset. They should do several things. One is forget about this idea, which I think is pushed by some Israelis, not all, of creating the biblical Israel, because that requires basically disappearance of the Palestinians. And I don't think that is realistic. Maybe it is. I don't think it's realistic because the Palestinians are too many. They are now all over the world, too. They have friends all over the place. So the Israelis have to think of a better strategy. I think the strategy is how can we help the Palestinians create their own state in a way that satisfies them and satisfies us. Obviously, Israel will probably have to renounce to some territory and the Palestinians will have to renounce to their claim that the Jews should go to the sea. That's crazy. That's not going to happen. At least not, it's not realistic to think it will happen in any foreseeable future. Excuse my spelling, my verbal spelling. Anyway, but, and I think that there is also a mind shift that should take place among Israelis and among Palestinians too. And it is to do something that the Europeans did in the Renaissance. The, Palestinian, the Palestinians, the Europeans in the Renaissance, under the influence of Greek thought, ancient Greek thought, which is where the whole thing comes from, they decided that the people should run the country, the people should govern. And they call that democracy. It's not a per perfect democracy because it's still run by an elite. It's more like an elected aristocracy. But at least the people have the power to decide who runs the country. And they also did something else. They decided we have to push religion away from governance. And slowly and progressively, most European states, the United States too, and Canada and other countries, they have separate state from religion. Yes, the Americans are still having their bills in God we trust and a few other symbols remain in different countries. And, you know, we have still all the churches and cathedrals. But the trend is religion should be an affair separate from public affairs. In my view, I'm not a believer. But I think for those who believe God exists, it does exist in their minds. minds and I respect that. But what I'm trying to get us at is the Israelis, the Jews, should decide that Israel is going to be a democratic, secular state. Of course, being populated by Jews, Israel's dominant religion will always be Judaism. But Jewish rabbis, no matter how high their rank, should have no say in the affairs of Israel as a nation. That is, the Israelis should decouple religion from state. Yes, the Jews have a right to a state, but not just religious Jews, all Jews, and not even Jews that feel culturally very, very identified with Judaism, even if they don't practice it or even if they don't believe in God. They have a right to have their own nation because they have a culture and they have a history, and I think it's realistic. And there, the place that they wanted to be is what we now call Israel. Yes, the Palestinians, maybe they were innocent victims, but the reality is like that. You know, I mean, the, the British were innocent victims of the Romans when they conquered them. But that was history and many other things like that. So the Israelis, the Jews, are in Israel to stay. 
and they should separate religion from state. But the Palestinians, which I believe most of them are Muslims, if they are not believers, at least they're culturally Muslims, they should also take the same step. And they should separate a Palestinian state from Islam. That requires a big step from both cultures, from both peoples, because both of them, unlike the Europeans, have not yet taken the step of separating religion from the state. Yes, the Jews in North America, in Europe, have done it. But they are Jews who live under countries basically based on the Greek tradition of the people, not the priests, running their own affairs. If Israel retaliates now with a vengeance, it will not change much. It will give immediate satisfaction to many Israelis because they say, well, we avenge this son of a gun who killed so many innocent Israelis. But in the long term, I don't think it matters. I think what matters is that Israel use its window of power to take steps to help the Palestinians create their own secular state, to take the step themselves of create, making Israel a non-religious state. I know it's a democracy, but we know you cannot govern in Israel if you are not Jewish. Yes, the Palestinians can still elect members of parliament, but the reality is Jewish, Jew, Israel is very strongly identified with Jews. And that is okay, but it should be separate from the religion. So that's the answer I wanted to give you. I'm very interested about all these issues, and I have a, a video channel, which uh, is uh, directdemocrats.com, thesuicesystem.com. I'm really more interested in the concept of the Swiss system because direct democracy is only a small part of the Swiss system. And since you may be watching this video, I also want to say the Swiss had terrible religious wars among Catholics and Protestants. In the end, they decided this is not very smart. They separated religion from the state. And there is many other details that I could go on, but this is why I have my video channel to understand why Switzerland has now the most democratic, most democratic, most stable, better run country in the world. You could say Switzerland is now to some way the ancient Greece and in some ways what you could call the lie to the nations. I hope you find my answer useful and of course I'll be happy to hear from you and if you want to pass on the video to others, I'm happy to do so too. I'll be happy that you do that. I haven't posted this video in my uh, The Swiss Political System channel uh, because uh, I just feel that I should answer you and uh, not post it there, although I may eventually. Anyway, thank you very much and let's hope that this is the last time that the Palestinians and the Israelis go at each other's throats and slaughter each other. Have a good day. Shalom. I don't know how you say that in Arabic, but... Maybe salam alaikum. Have a good day.